The holiday season is upon us, and for many, it's a time to reconnect with loved ones. But for Gold Star families who lost their loved ones in service to our nation, this time of year can be a stark reminder. So tonight, one organization is honoring their sacrifice. 13 News Now reporter Adriana De Alba is live in Virginia Beach talking to families. Adriana. Jacqueline, tonight is about these families remembering and honoring their loved ones. But beyond that, it gives them an opportunity to connect and share stories with others who have also experienced that painful loss. It's about keeping the memory of our fallen military heroes alive. For the past 10 years, nonprofit Honor and Remember has put on this special dinner to pay tribute to all military lives lost. So today at the Founders Inn, Gold Star families from all over the country are coming together to remember their loved ones who sacrificed their lives serving our country. Earlier today, we had the chance to sit down with the man who organizes this event every year. He's a Gold Star father who lost his son 14 years ago, and he talked to us about why tonight is so important for these families. You, you don't ever want to get to the point where memories fade and things are forgotten. And I don't believe that there is ever closure. So really, year after year, what you're able to do is kind of hold on to that, uh, re-remember, you know, the joy and share that with so many other families. And this is the largest gathering of Gold Star families that the organization has ever had, which is wonderful for them. And the Gold Star father also told me that today is not really about the sadness of losing their loved ones, but it's about a celebration of their lives and coming together. Love it. We're live in Virginia Beach. Adriana De Alba, 13 News Now. Adriana, thank you. And right before 13 News Now at 6, you saw the documentary Looking for Happiness. It chronicles the Norfolk mom's struggle of getting adequate care for her adult son who has autism. It also tells the story of a Virginia Beach family taken off guard when their daughter became mentally ill. You can watch Looking for Happiness on 13newsnow.com along with additional interviews and information on where to find help. New details continue to emerge as investigators try to figure out why a Saudi national opened fire at air station Pensacola, killing three sailors and wounding several more. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has more from Florida. The FBI revealing they're continuing to interview classmates and anyone who knew the gunman behind Friday's deadly attack at the Naval Air Station in Pensacola. We currently assess there was one gunman who perpetrated this attack. The FBI says 21-year-old Mohammed Al-Shamrani, a Saudi national in the U.S., part of a program for international military personnel, opened fire in one of the classroom buildings. Over 10 patients confirmed. The shooter killing 23-year-old Ensign Joshua Watson, 19-year-old Airman Mohammed Samit Haifam, and 21-year-old Airman Apprentice Cameron Walters, all students at the Naval Aviation School's command. Eight other people were injured. Sources briefed on the probe tell ABC News investigators are examining a report that the shooter watched mass shooting videos while at home with friends prior to the attack and are also looking at Al Shamrani's time at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. It's common for foreign nationals to train with the U.S. when their native countries purchase American military aircraft. <laughs> the FBI says other foreign national students who were close with the shooter are being interviewed. They're Saudi commanding officer has restricted them to base and the Saudi government has pledged to fully cooperate with our investigation. Pensacola is in Representative Matt Getz's district. What happened in Pensacola has to inform on our ongoing relationship with Saudi Arabia. We expect Saudi intelligence to work with our government to find the people accountable, or accountable and hold them responsible. Investigators as of now do not believe the shooter was connected to any group and believe he acted alone and are now working to determine a motive. In Pensacola, Florida, Stephanie Ramos, ABC News. Looking ahead to some big stories we're keeping an eye on this week. In Chesapeake on Tuesday, City Council is expected to discuss a resolution that would make the city a Second Amendment sanctuary. Democrats have promised to make gun control legislation a top priority next year. 
In response, several localities around the Commonwealth passed measures saying they would ignore any legislation they feel violates their constitutional right to bear arms. The next hearing on the impeachment inquiry into President Trump is set for tomorrow morning. Counsel from the House Intelligence and Judiciary Committees will review the evidence before introducing articles of impeachment. Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee Jerry Nadler says the charges will focus on abuse of power on Ukraine and obstruction in the congressional inquiry. And voters in the UK will head to the polls on Thursday to elect members of parliament with results impacting how or if the country leaves the European Union. This election was organized on short notice back in October after parliament refused to fast track Prime Minister Boris Johnson's European Union withdrawal agreement bill. The Brexit deadline was postponed from October 31st to January 31st. Well, move over Santa. Some local bikers are loading up their Harleys with Christmas presents for local kids. See how they're spreading the holiday spirit right after the break. At six earlier today, local bikers subbed in for Santa and made some Christmas wishes come true. 13 News Now reporter Dana Smith caught up with them as they were passing out presents to some very deserving kids. Members of this motorcycle club have big hearts. For the kids, they, they have a rough go and it's, it's not a hard thing to do. The Tidewater Harley Owners Group, Ladies of Harley, and the Blue Knights banded together this morning to deliver some holiday cheer to sick kids in the hospital. They need supplies and they need things that aren't always provided for them, so it's important that somebody does it for them. They hopped on their rides at Virginia Beach's Southside Harley-Davidson and cruised to Lake Taylor Transitional Care Hospital with gifts in tow. It's a great local hospital too, so it's, it means a lot to both of us, to everybody here. It's the 19th annual Ride for the Children event. It starts with an angel tree. All the angels were gone within three days this year. The tree was set up at Southside Harley Davidson. They're very disabled children um, and they're, you know, they need things. They have needs just like we do as far as, you know, toiletries and blankets and sheets and those kinds of things. It's also a fundraiser. In addition to picking an angel, motorcyclists can also choose to donate money to help fund medical equipment, supplies, and programs at the hospital. You know, bikers are very giving people. Uh, you talk about children and you speak to their hearts. Dana Smith, 13 News Now.